This video is going to be the first of a series of videos where I do something that I've sort of not done before and it's probably going to go absolutely terribly. So if you're very observant, which you probably wouldn't really notice from this, but I'm in a new flat. I have, I've not yet moved out my old one, but I've bought this place so I'm moving in in a few weeks or so. However, I've decided to do a sort of project before I move in with all this networking equipment. So as you can probably guess, it's quite a overly elaborate, overly complicated project that I really don't need to do. But what I'm going to be doing is installing Cat6 networking throughout the place. So there'll be several network drops to each room to provide network to things like TVs, PCs, smart devices, all that sort of stuff. So I'll probably have to split this video into multiple episodes because it's going to be quite a long project, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So we'll just sort of take a look at what we've got and we'll just sort of have to break it up into different parts. So, first of all, let's take a look at what we've got and what we'll be installing, and then we'll sort of go through the plans of what we'll be doing. So now let's take a look at what we've got here to install. So, here we have this massive box of Cat6 cable. There's 305 metres of low-smoke, zero-halogen Cat6 solid-core cable. So, that's that there. Then we have some more stuff. So, this one, this is a giant, well, not giant, but it's a 6U rack, which is wall-mountable. So, that can open up and in here I can install patch panels, switches and all that sort of stuff. So this is 6U and 390mm deep, so it should mount nicely on the wall. We'll take a look at where it's being installed later. To go in the rack, I then have a 6-way patch panel, no sorry, a 6-way PDU. It's just a cheap one that just does normal UK plugs. I've got a proper APC in the main rack, but this will do for this one. Just goes to normal plug there. So that's to go into this wall-mounted cabinet. I then also have this Cat6 patch panel, which has 24 ports. I don't think I'll use all of these, but there's a decent number. Just IDC connections on the back. And I went for this one because it also has this bar here that you can zip tie the wires to to prevent them from pulling out of the IDC connectors. Not all the ones I was looking at had this, so that's quite good to have. And you see it's sort of colour coded on the back. So that patch panel is also going to go in this cabinet. I then also have a bunch of keystone jacks and a bunch of modules to fit into a Euro module faceplate. The reason I went for separate keystone jacks and then separate Euro module faceplates is so I can have these. So these are Euro modules with a keystone jack in the back, but it's angled slightly so you can see it's sort of set in a bit and holds the jack at a 45 degree angle with a shutter over it. This means that when it's mounted in the wall, if I were to plug in a cable, eh, like that, the cable will be sort of face down from the wall slightly, it won't stick completely out but should be a bit neater. So that's why I went from, for these. Obviously I'll also need Euromodule faceplates to put these in to go in the wall. I've ordered them, they've arrived, then DPD seem to have lost them and if, I don't know what's happening with the tracking at the moment so I'll need to chase those up because they have seem to have gone missing in the delivery so they'll come later but those are the Euromodules I'm using for now in the walls. So yeah that's all the hardware I have so far. Obviously I'm still waiting on the faceplates to arrive I need to go and buy some back boxes, I'll do that tomorrow. And I've also got to buy a switch, so that'll be coming later as well. So we'll, that'll all happen down the line. First thing to do is just get all the cabling installed in the walls, and we'll put the rack up later. I just need the cables to be in place for now. So let's take a look at where everything's going. So now here I am in the hall cupboard, which is where I'll be installing that wall rack and having all the cables come back to. So up here is a sort of empty space, so I'll be putting the wall rack up here and bringing all the cables through the ceiling space into here. Unfortunately this building has concrete flooring, so I won't really be able to run it under the floors, so running it through the ceiling is the next best option really. So the, the rack will go up there, and it's quite a good location for it, because over here you can see I have all the electrical switch gear. So here's a consumer unit, an electric meter and all that sort of stuff. And in addition to that, there's also the BT master socket for the phone line, which is where my broadband will come from. So what it means is I can have my modem in the rack up here as well, and connect it directly into this, so I won't need to use any internal phone extensions, I can just have it connected directly into this. So in here, you'll also notice there's a big hole in the ceiling. That was just a little access panel, I just took it off, it was just a bit plasterboard that was just stuck up there, so that was easy to take down. And that's allowed me to view up into the ceiling space to see how the building is constructed, just to make sure there's space to run cables through. And it's actually quite good. You can see some photos I took just by shoving my phone up there now, but it's a concrete ceiling at the top. The ceilings are then, sus are then plasterboard suspended from wooden joists. However, the joists are held on with these metal straps which means that even where there's a joist, I can still hop a cable over the joist to get it around. So it should be quite good. So it should be fairly easy to fish cables along. 
So I'm not going to install all the cables in one run. I'm going to just do a quick one from here to the hallway and just have a port in the hall. And that'll let me sort of get a bit practice because it's quite a simple route to run across. And it'll be a fairly useful port to have anyway in case I have a printer in the hall or something. So yeah, we'll run the first cable and then we'll go from there. Now this definitely isn't the easiest space to film in. But what you can see up here is I've drawn a, a sort of rectangle on which is where I'm going to cut a hole. So this hole will be where all the cables going to the rack come out. So they'll come out of here and go down into that wall mounted rack. What I'll probably then do is I'll get like a little brush panel or something and put that over it just to make it a little bit neater. So what we now need to do is the first sort of cut into the wall of the whole project and cut out this rectangle. I'm just going to try and use this plasterboard saw. We'll see if it works, hopefully. So let's, let's just cut into this and we'll be able to get on with the project. Oh, it's also probably worth pointing out that I've been very careful and checked above here to make sure there's no electrical cables. The problem is with, with this flat is that all electrics and I think a lot of the plumbing as well goes through the ceiling. So last thing I want to do is stab this through a wire. So I have checked above this to be very careful. I've also used like no contact voltage detectors just to check. But you can see up this access panel and there isn't anything. So we should be safe to cut this out. And there we go. So that's quite dusty. I'm going to need to hoover a lot in here, but that is the plasterboard out. So there we go. That is the piece I've removed. And there's now a nice big hole in the ceiling. Very close to Joyce. So I thankfully just missed a Joyce there. So now we can continue with the project. Now that's removed. So what you're now looking at is a trail of destruction that I've had to cause to create a route for this cable. So down the bottom here, you can see we have a cutout, which is for the back box. So that's where the actual ports will be. Then here you can see there's two holes. That's because on the way I encountered a fire block and had to, had to drill through that. So I had to basically put, make a hole above to put the drill through and then wasn't able to get the cable fishing rods to feed up. So I had to put one below so I could feed the rod into the hole and get it to go all the way up. But now that's in place, it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Up here at the ceiling, there's a further two holes. This one allowed me to drill up through into the roof space. And this allows me to now access the top of that hole to feed wires down it. So there's now a total of four holes, uh, five holes in the wall, but at least now we've got access. Now that all that's done, the next step is going to be to try and feed the wire. So I've got some wire fishing rods as well as some fishing tape, which I can use to sort of get it through roof space and get it down the wall. However, I've also got this, which is just literally plastic washing line. So what I'll be doing is I'll be feeding this through first using the rods, get that to go the full route, and then I'll tie the cat sticks onto the end and pull it through which will allow me to pull this back and then add in extra runs of cat sticks from the same box. So next step is to try and fish this fit washing line through from the cupboard, like that hole I made in the cupboard, all the way out that connection at the bottom there. So that's going to be fun. I'm definitely not going to do it on camera though, just because if I spend time trying to film it, there's not much space, the lights are big, it gets in the way and it's going to take hours if I do that. So I'm going to do it off camera and I'll come back when it's done, hopefully. Okay, so we have significant progress. Um, I've, excuse the handheld camera, it's just the easiest way to film this. But we now have that slot that I cut in the ceiling and we're fed up some of the washing line, which is down there. It then comes up through the ceiling, across the hole, through this additional access hole I had to cut just to be able to get through those extra joists that I didn't expect. Then it comes over here, through this hole here, through there, and down inside the wall until it comes out at the bottom here. So we now have a full continuous piece of washing line from the cupboard through to the socket. So we now, so now all I need to do is tie the Cat 6 onto this end and hopefully be able to pull it right the way through. So I'm going to try that and we'll see how it works. Okay, 
So I've now taped the Cat 6 to the washing line, as you can see here, just using electrical tape, and I've made sure I've sort of done it on the end so there's no sort of sharp edge where the um, Cat 6 joins. I've sort of tied it around so it's a sort of smooth, almost like cone onto that. So that's all fairly secure. So what I'm now going to do is go over to the outlet that it's all coming out of and try and pull it through and hopefully that should feed the Cat 6 all the way through to the end. Okay, so we're now pulled it through a bit more, so in theory if I pull this we should get the Cat 6. There you go. So that's now the Cat 6 come through along with the washing line. So all I need to do is pull through more of it and feed it down the wall. Then do it again with the second one. Okay, so after a ridiculous amount of effort, I've now been able to pull one of the Cat 6s through. So that's now running all the way from the cupboard through to here. So what I'll now do to run the second one, because I want two points at this area, is I'm going to take this uh, washing line off the Cat 6, and then there's this huge bundle of excess that's been pulled through already. So what I'll do is, is I'll then pull, once it's untaped, I'll pull the washing line back through, leaving the Cat 6 here. And then I can tape more Cat 6 on and just use the washing line to pull it through again. So hopefully that'll be quite a quick system to pull multiple runs through to the same point. So time to run the second one. So it's now the following day, and as you can see, the back boxes and Euromodule faceplates have arrived. So I've already installed the back box here, ready for the faceplate to go on. But what I'm now going to do is connect up both the ends of this cable. So I'll put a faceplate on here, and I'll set up the patch panel, and just connect both of these up just to check they work before I continue with adding more ports. So if I'm going to be using the patch panel, that means we need to install the wall rack. So the next thing I'll do is get that rack put up on the wall. So we're now ready to mount the rack. So this is actually quite a nice design. So what you have is this bracket here that you mount to the wall and then this can hook into the back of the rack like that and then you can screw it on from the inside to stop it coming off so all I should really need to do is mount this on the wall and then hook the rack onto it so that should be quite easy this has four screw holes or four holes to mount bolts through to fasten it to the wall so that's what we'll be using now because it's a plasterboard wall and there aren't really any studs that are in a good place for it I'm going to be using these which are like plasterboard or drywall fixings which are rated up to 113 kilograms which is way more than enough so in theory you should just need to drill a hole push this into the wall and then screw into it so hopefully these hold it and it doesn't fall off but I'm going to try and use these so next step is try and get the rack put up so let's take a closer look at these fixings I'm using they're like this they're called grippets they were quite expensive from being cube but they'll I didn't want the thing to fall off the wall, so I'd rather spend more on decent mounts that'll actually hold it securely. But this is the mount here. So this is the bit that faces outwards, and what you do is you drill a hole big enough for this to fit through, hammer it into the wall, and then you can screw into the front here. And when you screw into it, these two metal sort of tabs at the back fold out, outwards like that, and grip onto the plasterboard from behind. And then when you screw into it, it pulls the whole sort of thing together and clamps the wall almost. So these should be quite a good way to secure it. There's probably a lot of better videos on YouTube if you look these up that show it actually how it works behind the wall. But these are what I'm going to be using. And it then comes with these massive bolts that actually go into it. So this should be a fairly secure way to mount this rack. So what I need to do now is drill a big hole that sort of diameter and then mount these on the wall. Okay, so as you can see here, I've now mounted three out of the four fixings. So there's two there, one there, then a final hole here to put the final fixing in. So all I need to do is put that final fixing in then I can put up that bracket that holds the rack. Okay, so I've now mounted the bracket. I initially had a little sort of panic because these screw heads stick out quite a lot. However, who designed, whoever designed the rack seems to have actually thought about this and has put big cutouts in the back for the screw heads to go through. So that should actually fit fine, so I don't need to worry about those. Another thing I forgot to mention is this up here, which is a new addition. It's literally just a draft excluder for the inside of a letterbox. However, I bought that and screwed it to the ceiling just to make it look a bit nicer than having that big, up, big hole up there. So that's now there for the cables to feed through. And then we can mount the rack onto that. So hopefully, the rack should just hook on to these three hooks and hopefully not fall off the wall. <laughs> well, it's installed anyway and it hasn't fallen down yet. So that's a good sign. So what I need to do now is fit the faceplate on the wall and connect that up. And then install the patch panel on the rack and connect that up. And then test the connections and see if they work. It definitely looks quite nice up there, it's not too big, I just hope it doesn't fall down. Okay, so we have more progress now. 
I have now installed the patch panel and wired both of those connections into the back of it. I then put the keystone jacks on the other end, which we'll take a look at in a second, and tested it with both a continuity tester and using a pair of laptops running over it. And it seems both links seem to be absolutely fine. They both auto-negotiate gigabit speeds and they can talk to each other without any errors occurring. So that's really good. So what we'll now do is we'll go and take a look at the keystone jacks and finally put it all on the wall and mount the faceplate. Okay, so as you can see at the other end, I've now cut the cable shorter and mounted these two keystone jacks. These are the sort of toolless um, type where you can just, you basically put the wires into a little guide, clamp it shut and it clamps, it automatically installs and cuts the insulation on all the wires, which is quite a neat setup. I wouldn't normally bother with toolless ones, however they were, they were actually cheaper than the ones that required a tool, so I just used them. So yeah, they are now installed. So what I need to do now is install the metal faceplate on the wall with these sticking through. And then in order to mount these into the faceplate, I then just need to clip on these little adapters, which are the Keystone to Euro module adapters, and that'll have them mounted in the wall. So here's the faceplates I've bought, which are Schneider Electric Ultimate Flat Plate. The reason I went for these, they were, they were not cheap, but the plat, in this flat, they're currently all the sockets are just cheap plastic ones. And I do plan on going around and replacing them all with nice metal ones from the same product line. So I'm going to make the network sockets match for now. They won't match any of the current sockets, but when I replace everything, they, they will. So these are the ones I'm installing now. So they're really nice, sort of brushed stainless steel. And just need to put that on the wall now. Just need to take it out. That's it there. And it should just go on like that. So all I need to do now is screw that onto the wall. And then we can mount the Euro modules. And there you go, the faceplate is now installed. So in, in theory, all I need to do now is clip these into the Euro module faceplates, which should be fairly easy. It takes a little bit of force, but should be able to put it in. There we go, snaps into place. And then this will just slide up, just slide the excess into the wall. And then this should just clip into the faceplate here. Like that, there we go. So all I need to do is do the same for the second one. Don't, I've installed them the wrong way around. If you open the slots up, you can see Maybe see in there, I've installed the keystone jacks upside down so you can't actually access the jack. Oops. So I'll need to take these apart and reverse them. And there we have it. That's the first set of ports installed. So what I now need to do is go and install the rest of them. So I'm not going to film all that because that's going to take hours. But I'm just going to sort of, not even hours, days. So I'll just sort of keep doing it myself and then I'll sort of pop in with little bits as I do it. So that's going to be fun to install the rest of these. So two down, 15 more to go. Okay, so it's now the next day, and I've got a few more bits to install. So I've gone out and I've bought some coax, so about 50 metres of coax, this is RG6. So I'll be using this to run TV aerials. Then I also bought this distribution amplifier, which I will be mounting in the hall cupboard next to the rack to amplify the TV signal to all the rooms. I think I'll be returning this one and get, getting a different one because this one produces a really loud sort of whining noise when it's in use. So that's just going to be really annoying, so I'll return this one and get another one. But I'll have something similar to this mounted in the hall cupboard. So I'll just be running the coax alongside the Cat6 to certain, certain points, so I'll just do it all at the same time.
there we go. So after a huge amount of effort, probably took about a week of pretty much doing this full time, I've got everything installed. So what we'll now do is we'll go in closer and take a look at what I've done. So now here I am in the hall cupboard. You'll have to forgive the handheld camera, I just can't really get fit the tripod in here. But up here on the wall you can see we have the cabinet. So we can open that up. And then here you'll find the patch panel. There it is. And there's all the connections going into the back of it. I originally said I was going to do 17 connections, but I actually ended up doing 21. I'll show you the extra ones I put in later. But they all go in there. And this patch, this cabinet will also contain the switch, um, modem, P PoE injector for the access point, and that PDU I showed before. Above this, we can then see up at the ceiling level, there are, all the cables are all going up there, through a brush plate. That is literally just a letterbox draft excluder, but it was fairly cheap and I just screwed it to the ceiling. And it's just a bit neater than having a big horrible hole there. Finally in the cupboard, we then have the aerial distribution amplifier. This is a similar one to the one I showed previously. However, this it doesn't have a, the functionality to power those magic eye systems for remotes, but it also doesn't make that whining noise that the previous one did. So this is absolutely fine. So that's it there. You can see it's just wall mounted and all the cables come down through individual holes in the ceiling into the side of it, then they're just connected with F-plugs. So we've got the input on the top, and then a connection out to the bedroom, office, and living room on the right-hand side. And it just goes out over this RG6 coax. So that's all fairly neat. The only thing I haven't been able to do is because, unfortunately, I'm doing this near Christmas time, it seems impossible to get an electrician boot, so there isn't actually a socket installed in this cupboard yet, which is a bit limiting, so I can't actually power any of this kit without running an extension lead out to the hall. So. I'll just have to cope with that temporarily until I can finally get an electrician in. But once I do, I'll get a double socket put in here, as well as ones put behind the TVs, and that'll be much better. We'll actually have a socket here to power everything. So yeah, that is the whole cupboard. So what we'll now do is we'll go and take a look at all the sockets I've put in the rooms. So now here we are in the room designated as the office, which is where I'll have my main PC and stuff. So we'll take a look at the connections I've installed here. You can also see on the wall there's a lot of holes all over the place. These were required to make access holes to get cables fed. I'll be filling most of these in, but there's a few I'm going to keep, such as the ones up on the ceiling there, because I've got to get an electrician to put a socket in, and I may as well leave access holes, because if they're going to need access holes to run the mains cable with the socket, they can probably use those ones rather than having to make extras. So I'll be leaving those ones up at the ceiling for now until I get the electrician in, but I will need to fill the rest of them. But now let's take a look at what we have. So down here on the wall, this is, these are sort of additional auxiliary sockets. There isn't going to be anything in front of this, so these will just be sort of spare if I'm doing something or working on a project. So we've got two of the network sockets there. Down here we've got another two. This is where my desk will be sitting, so these will be connected directly to my main PC. And there's just two there because when I've been doing this, I've just been running two cables to every point because it's almost as easy as running one, so there's no real point not running two. So those there will serve my PC. Then higher up the wall, this is where there'll be a TV. So there'll be a wall-mounted TV on a sort of arm that sticks out a little bit, where we've got a TV aerial connection going to that distribution amplifier and a pair of network connections because it's a smart TV so it can plug in for the smart functionality. And there's another one there in case I've got like a little mini PC or something to hide behind it. So that's up there. So that there's the office, so there's six network connections in here and a TV aerial connection. So now here I am in the bedroom and we can see there's another connection up here. So this is going to be for the TV in the bedroom. And like in the office, there's a pair of network connections because it's a smart TV and there will be a mini PC behind this one. And then we've got another just regular aerial connection that goes to that amplifier. And as before, I'll need to get a socket put in beside that. So that's the connection in the bedroom. So now here we are in the hall, where we've got that connection I actually installed on video, which is this one down here. So we've just got a pair of connections in the hall. These were installed more as a test rather than anything, so they're not actually urgently required, but I might have a printer here or something, so they're handy to have. And what you can also see here actually is, in this room I've already actually filled in the holes on the wall. So you'll see from before where there's all those holes I had to make, and here you basically can't see them. So. Filling them in definitely works, you can't really see any damage, which is nice. So that's those two connections there. And now in the hall, there's one more connection, and this is up on the ceiling. 
So this is going to be for the access point. So I've not actually put a port, like a faceplate on this because the access point will cover it. So what there is, is there's just one of the keystone jacks just sitting on the cable. And then this back box. So what I can do is I can screw the Unify access point into that back box, pl plug it into this and just stuff all the excess cable into the back box. So that'll be quite nice. So that'll fix it into the ceiling quite neatly. So because I've not actually moved in and moved the access point over, that's just sitting empty. But that's where the access point will go. So now here I am in the living room where we've got the TV mounting. So that's the bracket there for the TV, which I've taken down so we can see this. And up here we can see what faceplate we've got. So this has slightly more than the other rooms. So we've still got the two Ethernet ports. One will go to the smart TV. There won't actually ever be a smart box behind this, but again, it's really easy to run two cables. So there is a second port there just in case. And then we have some more stuff. So we've actually got the TV connection we had before there. But up the top here, there's also a satellite connection because the TV has a built-in satellite receiver. So I put that on there. And then finally, we have an HDMI port. So the video output of my AV receiver can be delivered straight to the TV. And as before, there'll be a double socket going in here. Then also around the room, because I've got the speakers, they actually go through these. So I've just got some basic, just speaker wire sticking through holes in the wall at several points around the room here. So there's one there, there's another one over there, another one over here, and then two over towards the back of the room, which you probably can't see because I'm standing too far away. There you go. All just sticking out the wall. So they'll have wall mounted speakers connected to them for the sort of surround sound system I've got. And yeah, that's the TV setup in the living room. It's actually quite neat just having these little face plates. There's just no mess. Everything plugs straight into that. And if I take the TV off the wall, there's no wires. It's just a socket sitting on the wall. Now here we are in the corner of the living room where my rack will be. So because the rack's going here, it'll have all my network hardware in it as well as all the AV equipment. So there's an absolute ton of different ports around here that go around the place. So we have this one here for TV type distribution, this one here for speakers, and this one here for network. So we'll go in and take a look at each of these. So here we have the faceplate for network, which has four connections in it. These will be going to the switch that's in here, in the rack here, and linking up to the switch that will be in the hall cupboard. And I'll just be creating a sort of link aggregated group across these just for better performance. So that's why there's four connections there. And obviously the white sockets that came with the place don't match any of these nice brushed faceplates I'm putting in, but I'll be replacing all these sockets with new brushed ones later. So eventually all the sockets will match, which is why I went for these faceplates. So that will be being replaced down the line. So now on this wall, you can see we have quite interesting looking faceplates for TV and AV stuff. So on the right hand side, we have ones for speakers, which you can see are all labeled. So front, right, front, left, center, surround, right, surround, left. And you just plug each speaker in. So the front right speaker connects into this one and this one here. These are quite nice modules, so you can either unscrew the surround there, feed a wire in and screw it on, or you can be putting put banana plugs into the front, which is what I'll be doing. Then on the back, you can just to, to sort of screw a wire into it. So they're quite neat little things. So that goes off to all the speaker connections around the room. So now on the left here, we have this faceplate that does all the AV stuff. So the first module you can see here has TV, radio, and two satellite connections. This is known as a quadplex module, and it's what the system in this building requires. What they do is they deliver, there's two coax cables that come down into the, into the flat. One of them carries a single satellite feed. The other one has multiple signals multiplexed onto it. So that one cable carries the TV, the radio, and, the, and one of the satellite connections. And because of different frequencies, that works. So what this faceplate here does is it splits them all out from that one cable, so you get each individual connection for each type of device and signal. That's roughly what the flat originally came with. It originally had one of these on the wall, well, this one on the wall, which has the same thing. It's got the two satellite connections, TV and FM DAB. It also had the return connection, which wasn't actually used, and a very helpful analog phone extension. So this is what it came with. It's not the most attractive thing ever, so I've ripped that out and replaced it with something a lot nicer. So that's the aerial input here. Next up we have these two, where we have SAT TV and TV return. So SAT TV is very self-explanatory. It connects a satellite connection up to the TV. So behind the TV there was that satellite connection. The other end of that comes out to here. So what I just need to do to make that work is put a simple F-plug cable between that connection there and one of the satellite connections here, and that feeds the signal up to the TV. 
TV returns a similar idea. What you do is you put a TV kit, a sort of aerial cable between the TV port here and then this here. And then the other end of this connection goes all the way over to the distribution amplifier. So you plug these into each other, that feeds the signal to, this, to, to the distribution amplifier, which then in turn feeds the signal out to all the TVs around the place. And then finally, we've got this HDMI port here, which is just a straight HDMI cable that goes up to the HDMI port behind the TV. So this will be going to my AV receiver. So all in all, it's quite a neat setup. So it effectively means there's no wires trailing out of walls. If I need to move the rack out of the way, I just unplug it all from everything here, shift it out. It's not like I'm gonna have like a brush plate with lots of cables coming out, so it's quite a neat setup. So yeah, that's all the connections behind the rack. In testing the TV distribution, I found that all channels worked absolutely fine when plugged directly into the incoming faceplate. However, after connecting the TV through the distribution amplifier, I found that many of these channels started to break up and it was completely unwatchable. I experimented about with this and found that the incoming signal to the flat is quite weak and simply doesn't survive the length of cable from the incoming point out to the distribution amplifier. The solution to this was to buy a line powered masthead amplifier that's designed to go on an aerial mast. What I did is I took this out of its waterproof enclosure and installed it inside the wall behind the faceplate in the living room. This amplifier is powered by the distribution amplifier in the hall cupboard, so it doesn't need a separate power supply. This efficiently boosts the signal so that it can survive the trip to the distribution amplifier, which then boosts the signal again and sends it out to the rooms. After doing this, previously unwatchable channels work absolutely perfectly. In the living room, there's also these two connections here, which doesn't have a faceplate. That's just Cat6 cables. There will just be another dual faceplate on there. These were ones I decided to run after I'd originally ordered all the equipment, so I didn't actually have any faceplates, so I've still got to go in and order some, so that's not actually finished yet. But there'll just be a dual Ethernet faceplate there. The reason I put that there was just because I was already running cables around this corner of the room and needed that access hole. So because there's already an access hole cut in the ceiling, it doesn't then take much more effort to drop a cable down into the wall. So I thought I may as well have it there, and it could be handy if I ever put something in this corner, or if I'm sitting on the couch over here, I could then you know, run a cable over to a laptop or something, so it made sense to put those in. And then, now time for the more ridiculous connection. It's just because I was on this side of the wall putting a port in, it doesn't take much more effort to put another two in here. So here I am now in the kitchen of all places, but down here you can see there's another two network connections behind my kitchen bin, which is completely pointless, but I suppose I could maybe get sort of a Sonos device or something, which could then be handy. So, yeah, there's two connections on the living room wall here and a further two through in the kitchen because reasons. <laughs> so yeah, those are still need terminated but that's those there. The living room really does show how many holes I've had to make those to make this work. So there's an access hole there, then another one here which actually shows the sheer bundle of cables going through the room. So that's all the network connections as well as a couple of coaxes for the aerials which all goes through here. There's then another access hole here I had to use to get over a joist. Another one down there, another one there for speakers. There's one over there above the window. Two more in that corner there. Two above the TV. And another two over there. So there's an absolute ton of holes in here that I'll need to fill in. So this room probably got off the worst for it because it's just such a long run around the room. And the difficulty is you can't really pull the cables diagonally past the joist because it gets caught on those metal ties. So you have to pull it like along one wall, get to a corner and then pull it along the other way. You can't just run it diagonally across the room. So there's definitely a lot of holes here to fill in. However, I have done some of them and I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. For example, on this wall here where there's another speaker connection, there was actually a hole at ceiling level and a hole on the wall and you can't even really see them. I mean, you can still see the ceiling because it's not actually been painted, but yeah, it's, they basically completely disappear. So it's not going to look bad once it's done, it's just going to be a lot of holes to fill in. What I've actually been doing is you can see there's a number next to that. Every bit of plasterboard I've taken out, I've numbered and then put a number next to the hole so I can make sure I get the right bits back in the right holes. So that's a little system I came up with. But yeah, that's the sheer amount of mess I've had to make in the living room. So there you have it. That was a sort of look at my first big DIY project I've done in this flat where I've installed networking and aerial wiring throughout. It's definitely turned out pretty well. I have really no experience in this, I'm a complete novice, 
but actually everything went okay without any major catastrophes of not, you know, the rack hasn't fallen off the wall yet and there's, you know, no ceilings fallen down. So it's gone quite well. It's interesting that that's my benchmark for success is that the ceilings didn't fit, fall down, but yeah, it's gone quite nicely. So this will be the end of this video. I've still actually got to move in here. So what I'll do is once I've actually moved in and actually got everything set up and actually working, I'll do another video and show up how the actual network's all connected up and everything actually running. So that'll be the next video, but that's the end of this video and you can see how everything's done. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and stand by for the second part where we see everything actually up and running.